2020 was a huge year for cryptocurrency. With some of the world's biggest companies accepting crypto as a legitimate form of payment, many people believe we are headed towards a financial revolution where blockchain technology will practically become the global currency. One of the leading companies in the world of crypto is Coinbase, a regulated crypto exchange in the USA. But how exactly did Coinbase become the world's biggest bank for cryptocurrency? Let's find out. Before we get into the story of how Coinbase became the biggest bank for cryptocurrency, I want to welcome you to Business Successful, where it's all about successful founders and businesses. What is Coinbase? Before I start talking about how Coinbase got here, let me explain what Coinbase actually does. Coinbase is one of the most popular crypto asset exchanges in the USA. So if you want to buy cryptocurrencies with government-issued money, also referred to as fiat money, Coinbase would be the place where you could do that. They are one of the few crypto exchanges that allows the use of fiat currencies. Coinbase was founded in 2012, and they are fully regulated and licensed in all U.S. states except for Hawaii. In the beginning, Coinbase only supported Bitcoin, but as they became bigger and bigger, their customers demanded more coins, and now they offer a variety of coins, like Ethereum, Ripples, USD coins, and more. The Early Days Coinbase was started by an engineer at Airbnb called Brian Armstrong. He decided to create an exchange for cryptocurrency because he had become very much intrigued in the technology behind it. Right when Bitcoin was making its way to the mainstream, Armstrong attended a meeting called the Satoshi Square, which took place every Monday in New York. At this meeting, Armstrong connected with several crypto enthusiasts who tried to convince him to invest in Bitcoin. Most of these people were seasoned investors, including Wall Street traders, which made a good impression on Armstrong. After the meeting in 2012, Armstrong partnered up with his friend Fred Ursum, who was a trader at Goldman Sachs, to lay the foundation for the crypto exchange they would call Coinbase. The goal of the company was to become a platform for people to buy and sell bitcoins directly through a bank transfer, which meant that crypto trading would become easier for people who wanted to try their hand in the market. Unlike anyone else at the time, Brian Armstrong wanted to take the idea of blockchain technology and make it easy to understand and invest in for the mainstream audience. This ambitious idea was applauded by venture capitalists, and Fred and Brian received a $5 million investment to kick things off. Later, in 2013, Coinbase got $25 million from Silicon Valley-based venture capital firm Andreessen Horowitz in a Series B funding round. This investment helped Coinbase gain traction, and Gavin Anderson, a Princeton graduate who had helped with the development of Bitcoin, got on board as well, taking an advisory role in the company, which established Coinbase as a legitimate exchange for the crypto community. Expanding the business This paved the way for Coinbase to form partnerships with companies like Stripe, PayPal, Dell, and Expedia which allowed their customers to start using Bitcoin as a form of payment for their products or services. Because of this, Coinbase's customer base rose to about 1 million in 2014. And while the company was initially only a way for people to make direct bank-to-crypto transactions, in 2015, Armstrong decided that he wanted to take things a step further by allowing Coinbase to act as a platform for people to exchange cryptocurrencies with each other. The thing that helped Coinbase stand out from other exchanges was their dedication to making the process easier for people who were not yet familiar with the concept. Because Coinbase was this exchange geared towards beginners, it was extremely easy for everyone to understand and use. Another thing that contributed to the legitimacy of Coinbase is the fact that it can't be used anonymously. All users are required to submit a government-issued piece of ID, and in some cases, Coinbase even demands address verification before people can use the platform's buy, and sell features. Despite being built for an online coin, Coinbase actually doesn't keep most of their assets online. 99% of their assets are saved in an offline storage that can't be accessed. The remaining 1% of Coinbase's assets are available online in the hot wallet system. These are all insured to protect users from any kind of loss. The Big Breakthrough In 2015, Coinbase got a $75 million investment from the firm Draper Fisher Jurvetson, which had helped the company launch their exchange. Their instant success was heavily reliant upon investments, 
because at that point, the company was trying to break into new markets to attract as many customers as they could. And of course, to do this, they needed funds. A huge breakthrough came in 2018 with a $300 million funding round led by Tiger Global Management. Andreessen Horowitz and Polychain also continued to support Coinbase and remained fans of the way Armstrong was trying to revolutionize the financial industry. This helped the company's valuation go all the way up to $8 billion, the highest for any US-based crypto exchange. When it comes to how Coinbase actually makes money, it's a simple business model. Every time a user makes a trade, they must pay a small percentage of it to Coinbase, known as a transaction fee. Coinbase oversees user funds, similar to a regular bank. However, as secure as Coinbase promised to be, their security was seriously breached in 2019 when the company had to tackle a cyber attack. It's a good thing Armstrong had invested heavily into programmers to keep the site safe because they were able to counter this attack and make sure that no cryptocurrency was stolen. This attack didn't seem to scare people. In fact, Coinbase's revenue even went up from $529 million in 2018 to $543 million in 2019. Going public There has been a strong growth in revenue for Coinbase over the last years. In 2019, they generated $543 million in revenue and forecasted to generate twice as much revenue by the end of 2020, which they did. Their success has been so immense that Armstrong decided to take the company public on April 14th of 2021. On the first day of trading, Coinbase was valued at $86 billion, which made them the seventh biggest new US listing of all time. Expanding In 2020, Coinbase also launched their own Visa debit card, which has attracted even more customers to start using crypto as their preferred form of currency. The surge of crypto investing in recent years has presented companies with the opportunity to develop crypto management platforms of their own. Some companies did, like Kraken, Binance, and eToro. Despite this competition, Coinbase is still the leading platform for people to trade and use crypto. The future of Coinbase While the world of crypto has long been labeled as fraudulent and untrustworthy, Coinbase has emerged as a legitimate platform which has allowed both individual and institutional players to invest in crypto. According to Brian Armstrong himself, the company is currently seeing 200 to $400 million a week in new crypto deposits coming in from institutional customers. Armstrong also believes that the future not only holds a greater adoption of crypto, but he also believes that in countries with high inflation rates and large remittance markets, cryptocurrency, and specifically Coinbase, can really shine. Thank you for watching our video on Coinbase. Let us know your thoughts in the comments and subscribe for more.